Well, 1,000 new shows we've done together. Right. And, Mr. Grant, I just want to say I have enjoyed every single one of them. Me too. Give or take eight or nine hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and only you could have figured out exactly when you did your thousandth show. How'd you do it? Oh, it was really easy. I mean, I've been doing the show for four years and a week. I get two weeks vacation a year. We do the show five days a week, so that makes 250 shows a year. So four years in one week would make 1,005 shows. But I checked with personnel, and I found that I'd been out sick with a cold four days. And there was that one day that I went to Chicago for the convention. So tonight is my exactly 1,000th show. <laughs> I'm glad I asked. How about that time there was a power failure at the transmitter when we blacked out? Okay, everybody, go home. Come back to <laughs> Knock, knock, Mary. Oh, kid, come on in. Knock, knock. I'd knock on the door, except it was open, I had to say, knock, knock. Right. Come on in. Knock, knock, Lou. <laughs> door was open. I didn't want to walk in without knocking. I don't know what's gotten into Ted tonight. He's just full of oil and vinegar. <laughs> Mary, this is my friend Judith Chandler. Judith, this is Murray Richard. Hi, Judith. Hi, Mary. It's nice of you to have me. Oh, happy 1,000. Oh, well, actually, it's my 999th. <laughs> oh, I understand. I lie about my age, too. <laughs> Come on, Judy, I'll buy you a drink. Oh, how nice, thank you. Excuse me. You know, she was just divorced, and I thought it would be a good chance for her to meet people. In fact, Ted and I brought her here hoping she might hit it off with Mr. Grant. They have so much in common. I mean, they both got dumped. <laughs> George yet, but uh, Mr. Grant is seeing someone kind of regularly. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you want me to get her out? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Hey, Lou. I want you to meet Judith Chandler. Judith Lou Grant. Hello. Wow. Hey, hold it, Lou. <laughs> I want to tell Judy here about the man she just met. Now, Lou may not be as young as some guys are. <laughs> And he may be a little overweight, and he may not look like much. But he makes a bundle. Okay, I hit it over the fence for you. Now all you've got to do is run around those bases. Oh, say, listen, maybe it'll be hard for you to break the ice. Do you want me to stick around and help? No, that won't be necessary. So... What do you do for a living? I'm the principal of Thoreau Junior High School. Principal? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That mm -hmm. sounds great. <laughs> oh, have you two met yet? Yes, we have. <laughs> well, you both better forget it. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's taken. Don't worry, we'll find somebody interesting. <laughs> Georgette, I'm fine. Marie, would you mind talking to my friend Judith until I can find her somebody interesting? <laughs> You weren't interesting, Murray. I meant interesting to her. Well, I know everybody here. It could be a long wait. <laughs> the only people I know here are Georgette and Ted. Mm. Well, before I say the wrong thing, how well do you know Ted? I met Ted when he spoke to an assembly at our junior high school. Well, how was he? It's the first time the 2,000 junior high school kids have ever been urged to quit school and hook up with a radio station in Fresno, California. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Murray. You're wasting the whole party. If you don't make a connection pretty soon, you're going to go home empty-handed. Well, fortunately, I've lined somebody else up for you. Well, I'd like to stay here with Murray, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. I'd love it. <laughs> you wouldn't think it was rude of me if I... if I uh, left uh, this moment? Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. Murray, 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 Murray. So, Mr. Grant, how'd you enjoy my party last night? Not so hot. Well, that's the most you've ever enjoyed one of my parties. You'll never guess who really got my goat last night. Ted. Right. Usually nothing he says bothers me. But when he introduced me to that girl, the one who was with Murray all evening... Yeah. He said a lot of things about my looks. 
<laughs> well, that sort of bothered me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grant, how can you let that bother you? You're a very attractive man. Me? Uh, well, Mr. Grant, it just might surprise you to know that women talk. And women find you very attractive. Me? Yeah. <laughs> they do, really. Oh, God. No kidding? No kidding. <laughs> Mr. Grant, they do. Women find you very sexy. Sexy? <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, it's true. Some women do. What do you mean, some? <laughs> hey, are we crazy? Even talking about something like this is ridiculous. Talking about a lug like me being in any way... Sexy. <laughs> Murray and Judith, Murray and Judith. <laughs> if there's anything like it, I ask you. Anything like what? Oh, come on, Lou, you get the drift. Murray and Judith at Mary's party? Do I have to spell it out for you? El lobo at first sight of. <laughs> okay, sir. Bring a girl for you, Lou, and she ends up with Murray. Well, some guys got it and some guys don't. <laughs> Mr. Grant wasn't interested in meeting anyone new. Oh, sure, man. Stick up for the boss. <laughs> <laughs> and Judith and Murray were simply talking. There is nothing going on. Oh, sure. And it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. <laughs> Morning. 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 Good morning. Now, oh, come on, Murr. We have been waiting here to hear what kind of a morning it is. We know what kind of a morning it is. We want to know what kind of a night it was. <laughs> Ted, Murray doesn't have to tell anybody anything. Just because his wife wasn't at the party last night and he spent four hours talking to a recently divorced woman and then drove her home alone after the party. Tell him, Murr. <laughs> Nothing happened. See? Marry you funny little hothead. <laughs> you missed my drift. All I'm trying to do is point out to Murray there's a little bug buzzing around him, that's all. And it's gonna bite you, Murray. What? What are you talking about, Ted? A love bug, Murray. It's gonna bite you. Ted, will you buzz off? <laughs> sure, Murray. <laughs> Murray, when you order office supplies, add a giant can of Raid. <laughs> I talked to a woman at a party. I simply had a conversation with a woman at a party. Oh, come on, Murray. You know Ted. He blows things up way out of proportion. If she has this piano she wants to sell. I'm interested in buying a piano. Well, Maria and I have been wanting to get a piano for a couple of years now. Now I make it Judith's. It was all perfectly innocent. Oh, boy. See, Mary, uh, you don't have to answer this, but... Well, do you think there was anything wrong in my talking to Judith at that party last night? No. Or am I asking her to have lunch with me today? No. Or am I not telling her that I was married? Yes. Mary, like I said, you don't have to answer. <laughs> Minneapolis, St. Paul, it's 4.30, and we're hard at work. In New York, it's the cocktail hour. <laughs> the lights are beginning to twinkle on the great wide way. <laughs> and in London, smartly dressed theater goers are strolling down the Strand for a late supper at the Savoy. And in Tokyo, it's tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, tomorrow. Do you realize there are people alive here in Minneapolis who are already dead in Tokyo? <laughs> Hello, people of the newsroom. Murray, you know it's 4.30 in the afternoon? Oh, Lou, 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 don't be so upset. Murray, a lot of news came in over the wire while you were out. You weren't here to get it. What, news stories? Yeah, news stories. Oh, Lou, there will always be news stories. <laughs> oh, really? Sure. What's one or two news stories? News stories come and go. I mean, something is happening all the time. What the hell, Lou? Boy, if this doesn't take the ever-loving cake. Boy, I've heard everything. 
comes in here cursing like a sailor. <laughs> You're dropped in trouble, boy, deep trouble. <laughs> What have you been drinking? Pui Fusse. Too bad. What do you mean? What? Why? I've been a newsman for 30 years. I've sobered up guys who were drunk on everything from scotch to aftershave lotion. But never once in my life have I had to sober up anyone who was drunk on Pui Fusse. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to give him black coffee or cheese. Uh, Ma'am, I had a great lunch. I may have just had the greatest lunch in the entire history of lunch. What can you have? An experience. We went to this wonderful little French restaurant. Oh, we talked and talked about everything. You know, I told her about all the things I want to do with my life, all that stuff that's hard to talk about. And she listened, Mary. She listened. She thinks I'm cute. <laughs> You know, the last time anybody said I was cute, I was. Listen, you know that you're my very dear friend. Mm -hmm. But Marie is my friend, too. And I just hate to see this thing with you and Judith turn into a cheap affair. Hey. You think it could? <laughs> Lou, you got a second? Sure. Oh, uh, look, uh, I'm sorry about this afternoon. Oh, hey, these things happen. I've gotten spots like that plenty of times myself. <laughs> look, I got a problem, Lou. No, oh, no, look. <laughs> Would you put that back, please? My stomach is still a little queasy. It's about Judith and me. Say hello. Oh, sorry. Is this business or personal? Personal. Guy talk, eh? After hours guy talk? That kind of getting closer together kind of talk? I can dig it. <laughs> so what are we what are we rapping about? Murray's love life? <laughs> Ted, there is no love life. You see, Lou, that's my problem. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing's happened, and I really don't want anything to happen, but, well, strangely enough, I keep feeling I'm missing something. I keep feeling that I'm missing a chance to experience a part of life that will never come again. See, Mary, I know exactly what you're talking about. I mean, sometimes at home, at night, lying in bed, I go crazy thinking about how much there is out there, how much to do, how much to see. And I live on a quiet block. <laughs> Listen, Murray. It's not the things you do in life that you regret. It's the things you don't do. I mean, in my whole life, I have only one regret. That on January 8th, 1964, I said to Holly Holmberg, I'm too busy tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> well, Murray, there was no tomorrow. The carnival moved on. Pizza. <laughs> It's kind of touching. I'll say. That's the last shot I'll ever get at a trapeze artist. <laughs> Murray, you got something good. Don't mess it up. I know, Lou. I mean, I've been happily married for 18 years. I mean, why do I want to start fooling around now? Listen, Murray, anybody who's been married 18 years and hasn't fooled around isn't normal. Ted, I was married 26 years and never fooled around. Oh, 26, yeah, but not 18. <laughs> I don't understand myself, Lou. I mean, what I have is wonderful. Why do I want something that's different? Hey, can I, can I interrupt you? <laughs> let me, let me put it on terms you can understand. <laughs> now, let's say you're the Minnesota Vikings. And every time you play the Green Bay Packers, it's a, it's a great game. But that doesn't mean that's the only team you want to play. You don't want to play them every Sunday for the rest of your life. <laughs> Any little Chicago Bears? <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs? <laughs> little Houston Oilers? I 
I get your point, Ted. You not only made your point, you've listed the entire schedule of the Vikings away games. <laughs> you want to see her again? No, that's the thing. She invited me up to her apartment tonight. Her apartment? Her apartment? Well, end of discussion. <laughs> Look, she wants to sell me her piano. A piano? <laughs> In her apartment after hours after work? End of discussion. <laughs> Look, I need a piano. Mary, take it from me. You don't want to play the piano. You want to play the Houston Oilers. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? I, shall I go to her apartment or not? No. That's it? You want a debate? Go to William Buckley. You want an answer? I gave you <laughs> Okay. Well, I'd better get going. I told Marie I'd be home at 11. Already it's uh, 7.15. <laughs> go there anyway, huh? Yeah. All right. But well, just remember. You start something tonight, you won't just be doing something you'll regret the rest of your life. You're going to be doing something a lot worse. You're going to be following Ted's advice. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you, Mary, but when Ted called, I got so upset. He said Murray is having Judith on the side. Oh, no. No, Murray and Judith had lunch. I feel so guilty. I was the one that introduced them. I'll never be able to look Murray's wife in the face again. Gee, I didn't know that you even knew Murray. I don't, and now I never will. <laughs> Georgette, nothing's going to happen. Murray's just going through a stage. He's, he's wondering if women find him attractive. Oh. Why doesn't he just do what Ted does? Stop them and ask them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mayor. Mur. Oh, hi, Georgia. Hi. Oh, some coffee. Hey, Mur, has anyone ever told you you're an attractive man? <laughs> because you are, you know, you're a very attractive man. Nice. That ought to do it. Uh, Mayor, you uh, said I could talk to you any time. Yeah, right. Oh, look, do you have a time? Ten to nine. Oh, I thought it was a little slow. I want to be home by 11. Oh. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm gonna stop at uh, Judith's apartment and look at a piano on the way home. Uh-huh. So what do you think? Hey, Mur, don't do this to me. Why? I, I think you, you want some kind of permission and you're just not gonna get it. Coffee will be ready in a minute. Although why an attractive man like you needs coffee is the idea. Oh, I know what I have to ask you. Uh, have either one of you seen this thing? I did. Yeah, oh, what's it about? It's wonderful. Paul Newman and Robert Redford. Now, the plot. Just describe the plot. Well, they're sort of con men. Con men, right. Hey, Murr, mm. why, why do you want her to describe the plot when it's playing right down the street? And you could be sitting there what? Oh, Murray. I don't understand why you said, oh, Murray. <laughs> Just because he wants to know the plot of the movie in case somebody should ask him? Oh, Mary. <laughs> Everybody's finding out about me, and I haven't even done anything yet. Excuse me, I'm going to the kitchen. I don't think you want to discuss this in mixed company. <laughs> Mary, don't you see? I mean, I gotta go there tonight to find out what I'm gonna do when I get there. Hey, Murr. Look, you and I have known each other a long time, right? Well, a long time. And we respect each other? We respect yeah. each other. And you know I'm not the kind of person to butt in. Oh, never. You never butt in. And I don't go in for little psychological insights into people you know. I never do that, right? I know. Good. Until now. Check. <laughs> Murray, it is just, I don't think you want to go to see Judith at all. It's so clear. I mean, it's just so really clear that if you wanted to see Judith, you would not be standing here chatting with me at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? It's 9 o'clock? Look, uh, I'll see you, Mayor. Where's Murray going in such a hurry? He's gonna buy a piano. It must be some sale. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome very much. Well, uh, I see that's the piano, I suppose, hmm? No, that's a copy. 
I keep the real one in my safe. <laughs> hey, this is fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like a great piano. Uh, why don't I just go over and give it a dry run? Hmm? It's been in my family for years. I learned my first Chopin Nocturne on this piano, my first Bach Prelude, my first Beethoven Sonata. It's a nice tone. <laughs> well, I don't really play, really, you know. I, I just fool around. It's not bad for fooling around, either. <laughs> Strangers in the night Exchanging glance as strangers in the night Exchanging glance as strangers in the night Exchanging glance as... Hey! A lovely singing voice. Oh, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> I just kid around. Hey, this is a great piano. Oh, thanks. Strangers in the night, exchanging glances, strangers in the night, exchanging glances, strangers in the night. Oh. Uh, we haven't talked about price. Uh, what are you asking generally? You know, in the vicinity, just generally. Oh, in the general vicinity? Yeah. I was thinking about uh, three thousand dollars. Three thousand? That's nice. <laughs> Good. Let's drink to that. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You get sparks from the rug. <gasps> Maybe it's not the rug. Oh no, no. I've been on rugs before. You get plenty of sparks. Oh. Huh. Judith, do you think you'll come down a couple of hundred dollars on the floor? Well, sure, uh, okay, yeah. How about um, 2,500? Hey, terrific, that's great. I'll make up the deposit. Uh, Murray, we don't have to discuss the piano tonight. Oh, I know, sure. Hey, it's 10 after 10. That's right, it's 10 after 10, so what? Well, see, this is the thing. I gotta be home by 11. <laughs> How far do you live? Too far. But look, Judith, I want you to know that I think you're terrific. Murray, it's all right. I understand. You don't have to explain. Yeah, but I want to explain. No, it's 10 after 10. Well, that's all right. I got about five minutes left. Now, look, I want you to know that, well, I'm sorry that you wasted your evening. Oh, I died. Oh. Consider it a wasted evening. No? No. I've been trying to unload that lousy piano for years. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. Hey, you know, I came here tonight because I wanted to find out what I would do when I got here. And I want to thank you. Because it's going to be nice going home knowing this is what I did. That's all that happened. Oh, Mer, I'm glad everything worked out. But listen, you don't have to come all the way over here to tell me. No, that's okay, Mary. It's only a quarter of 11. So everything's fine, huh? Yeah, everything's fine. Uh, I just have one little problem. What's that? Well, I don't know how to explain to Marie that I bought a piano while I was watching the sting. <laughs> <laughs> 